why would this bitter substance, because in fact, caffeine is quite bitter in high concentrations. Why would this bitter substance be something that insects or animals would want to consume at all? It turns out that in most plants, caffeine is present in small enough quantities that insects and other animals, and in fact, we can't actually taste the caffeine. If I were to give you a little bit of pure caffeine, yes, it would be a stimulant for you, but you would say that it tasted awful. It's in a category of compounds that would strongly stimulate the bitter receptors on your tongue and would make you cringe and pucker and essentially walk away from whatever it is that contained that caffeine and from the experience that contained that caffeine. Well, in nature, caffeine is present in very low concentrations or is masked by other flavors within flowers, beans, and plants. So low, in fact, that they are not detectable to the taste receptors of insects, and in many cases to the taste receptors of humans. And of course, there can be high levels of caffeine in a plant, but if the plant also contains compounds that mask the flavor of caffeine, well then, those plants are going to essentially be even stronger reinforcers for the flavor of the plant. Okay, so now we're talking about strong flavors plus strong neurostimulant effects of caffeine. And the most important point here is that all of these effects of caffeine are subconscious. It is not because the bee or you likes the taste of caffeine. In fact, most people, when they take their first sip of coffee, they find that it tastes bitter and kind of noxious. They don't like it. You may not even remember that because it happened so long ago and because caffeine is such a strong reinforcer that very quickly you come to like the taste of coffee. You might even come to like the feeling of your mug in your hand. You might even come to like the smell of coffee and so on and so forth. The point of the reinforcing effects of caffeine are that they are largely subconscious. We are not aware of them. Now you might say, no, that's not true. When I drink caffeine, it makes me feel really good. So I'm aware that it makes me feel good. In order to illustrate how reinforcement really works, let me give you the counter example, which would be an aversive agent. So we have reinforcing agents and we have aversive agents. Let's say that there were compounds in nature that exist in plants that are aversive, and indeed they are. And let's say that these compounds were present at such low concentrations that you couldn't taste them. Let's say you wake up in the morning and you go to your refrigerator and you open it up and you are thirsty. And so you reach for a nice, um, you know, rich red containing beverage in a glass jar. Maybe it looks like um, cranberry juice or something of that sort, or even a nice clear glass of water. It looks like a jug of water, a glass of water, and you drink that. Tastes fine to you, maybe even tastes great to you. And then let's say about 30 minutes later, you feel a little queasy, you feel a little off, you feel like going back to sleep, you just don't feel very good. You don't know why, but your nervous system is a predictive machine and it has a process in which it back integrates, or I should say integrates backwards into your immediate experience that preceded that not so good feeling. We can reliably say that there is a much lower probability that the next day when you wake up, that you would reach for that same beverage or for that same container even. And maybe if you're in a novel environment, maybe you're staying in an Airbnb or a hotel or something of that sort, you might even find that you don't really like the kitchen in which you consume that beverage in the first place. And you don't know why. And unless you got very, very sick the, the day before, it's unlikely that you would have such a strong response that you would entirely avoid, for instance, water or glass jars containing liquids, et cetera. Let's say you went back to the refrigerator and you consumed beverage again and you just didn't feel so well. You felt less good than you normally would. Well, even without any ability to taste what's in that beverage and even without any understanding of what was happening to you at a conscious level, there is a very, very high probability that you will avoid drinking that particular beverage and certainly at that location and in the same volume in the subsequent days. That's just the way that aversive agents work and they work by way of activating neurons in the gut that communicate with areas in the brain that give us this feeling of queasiness. And for some of you hearing this, that pathway and that association with times in which you felt queasy and as if you wanted to vomit is so powerful that you might even be feeling some of that symptomology now. For certain people that's going to be increased salivation which precedes vomiting. We know that there's a class of neurons in the brain 
related to an area called area postrema that actually stimulates vomiting. And if I keep talking about this, I'll probably feel like I want to vomit. So I'm going to move on from this in a moment. So when we ingest caffeine containing beverages and foods, it's the exact opposite scenarios to what I just described. Caffeine as a reinforcer makes us feel slightly better or a lot better in the immediate minutes and hours after we ingest it. So it's acting as a reinforcing agent, not just while you're under the effects of caffeine, but for the things that preceded the ingestion of caffeine, which is why you return again and again to caffeine containing beverages such as coffee and tea, or maybe even foods that contain caffeine, even if the taste of those foods is not something that you would otherwise consider especially delicious. In fact, most people, when they take their first sip of coffee or tea or other caffeine containing beverage, they find it to be very bitter. And that's not because of the taste of caffeine. It's because of the taste of the beverage itself, independent of caffeine. However, when caffeine is present in there, they come to prefer that taste over most all tastes. In fact, they will, as I mentioned earlier, will invest a lot of financial resources and time and energy to make sure that they get that beverage. What they're trying to make sure is not that they get that taste, but that they get the caffeine. It is that positively reinforcing. And the taste, therefore, takes on new significance, new meaning, and we come to associate it as positive. And in fact, most of us, including myself, love the taste of espresso, love the taste of coffee, love the taste of yerba mate, even if the initial taste, the very first time that we consume that beverage was either neutral or negative. And that is all because of the reinforcing properties of caffeine. 